Every Minecraft texture pack, no matter the style of it, is capable of being a great pack. No matter how skilled you are at creating textures, whether you're a newbie or a professional artist, this video will help you create the best packs possible, no matter your skill level, and make sure that you have a pack that you're proud of and will be perfect for your gameplay and for other people to use. There are a lot of criteria for what makes a pack good, but I will be breaking it down into its most important qualities and also listing common mistakes people make that could absolutely ruin packs and how to fix them. It is okay to use other texture packs as a base and also as a reference for creating your own textures. If you aren't that skilled at creating textures from scratch, you can use another pack as a base and work out what's right for your pack. And feel free to mix and match textures from different packs, provided that they are consistent with the theme. We'll get into that later. The number one most important factor in making a resource pack is consistency. You need to make sure that you have a style that is consistent across all of the textures that you have. And when finding a general style for your resource pack, it is good to use color palettes. Color palettes can loosely be defined as a group of colors that either blend together nicely or contrast nicely. Use those colors as the main colors for the style of your pack. Another thing that you should pay close attention to is resolutions of textures. People make this mistake all the time where they have different resolutions for different blocks and they just look terrible when going together. The key aspect to making a pack that looks clean and consistent is having matching resolutions resolutions, okay? I swear to God, not enough people do this. So as an example, I have a group of block textures here that all have a matching resolution. A lot of these textures aren't mine, but a lot of stuff in this pack is mine because I've basically been porting this pack. It is called Aphotic 3 and I think it's a great pack, but there are just some flaws and inconsistencies that I wanted to address. So I went ahead and actually remade loads of textures myself. Now you can see as the stone actually matches the stone on the, what I did was actually cut out pieces of different blocks. Now this is a good thing. If you are not skilled at making textures, then you can use other textures from blocks and you can cut out patterns from them and just designs and you can overlay them and make a really good result like this. Same with this mossy cobblestone here which was not existing in the pack previously and stuff like this with the rooted dirt where I actually took the roots from the faithful texture and overlaid it on this original dirt. When you mix up resolutions such as these items having different resolutions to the normal one just make sure that they are actually in a category. For example these pvp items are 128x yet every other item is 64x. Now this is okay because you have the differing resolutions in their own categories so pvp items are in their own category normal items are in their own category and so on. Technically you could have food items in their own category with a different resolution. Just make sure that things inside categories are all matching, okay? Or make sure that they look like they match at least. This is a key way to add consistency to your pack and increase the overall visual aesthetics of it. Another thing with consistency is to make sure that every texture in the game is covered or at least accounted for. A lot of the times people port packs from 1.8 version and they don't add the textures for the newer Minecraft versions. So you just see an ugly transition between custom textures and the default ones. When you have default textures that are just suddenly appearing, it just ruins the whole experience. Well for me at least, I have OCD. So what I did was I actually went ahead and downloaded the faithful resource pack which is open source by the way and added other 32x textures that match the same overall resolution so there's no different resolutions that are conflicting with each other. The next category is using the tools given to you effectively to make the best textures possible. This involves any image editing app that you may have whether it be photoshop, paint.net or even just ms paint like if you want to go for that then uh, be my guest. But just make sure you know your image editor well and make sure that you look at all of its features and special features that you might not notice that could actually greatly enhance your ability to make textures. For example, in paint.net there are loads of special effects and plugins that you can download that you can add nice effects and overhaul the look of your textures in a really easy and simple way without having to manually do everything. For example, you could add a small surface blur to your textures to make them look more smooth. Or you could use a really simple sharpening tool to sharpen up the texture to make a coarse dirt instead of normal dirt. This came from the normal dirt, but what I did was I added a sharpening filter so it keeps the same overall texture, but it just you, you can see the difference with it now. And simple tools like that can just change the overall look of your texture. 
by a great amount. Don't go into your image editor not knowing what any tool does. You, you have to have a bit of learning experience. Now the next factor to take into account is attention to detail. When you're making textures, just look out for the small details that you could edit and that, could actually, that can increase the overall visual quality of your pack. There are loads of tiny details out there that you could use that people generally miss out. I can actually show you a few attention to details that I've made in one of my packs. I'll use the cotton candy pack as an example. Now, as you can see here, you'd think that these edits aren't really necessary and to the average person, they wouldn't be. But if, you, but if you look closely, you can see that I've actually went ahead and added the theme to these items that are in the textures, for these different tables. As you can see, I have added the cotton candy color to the arrow here and the knife here, and also the bow. And you can see with the crafting table, I have also added the same details here. Small details like these can just really enhance the overall feel of your pack and just make it look more consistent. The same thing with this dragon egg over here. People generally miss out on editing this, which is, it looks really good when you apply certain edits to it. Like this cotton candy dragon egg, I'm actually really proud of. Same thing with this portal frame. It is something that I'm kind of proud of and how I managed to incorporate the overall color scheme into it in a really nice way. And it just takes a bit of practice. The more you make packs, the more, the more skilled you'll get at doing it. So you don't need to be afraid when you're making a pack for the first time because you will learn from it and you will get better, I promise. Overall, attention to detail can go a long way in pack making. Another main thing that is useful to learn is optimization. By optimization, I mean cutting out any useless bloat that may be in your pack. For example, you may have loads of unused textures if you used a vanilla pack as a template. This can just increase the overall file size of your pack and also make it take longer to load since the game is loading unnecessary textures that don't need to be there since they are default. Another thing is avoiding excessive resolution on certain textures as they can really be a performance hit. The main textures that can give you a performance hit at high resolution is the enchantment glint and the skybox texture. For skybox textures, I suggest keeping it at 1024x, no higher, because any higher is unnecessary. And with enchantment glints, if you want to find a perfect resolution for your enchantment glint, just make sure that your enchantment glint matches the armor because this is a really good way to have an enchantment glint that looks very nice and goes well with the armor that you have. As you can see here, I have changed the resolution of the enchantment glint so it matches perfectly with the armor texture, which is another part of having a tension to detail that you should definitely learn. It is also extremely important to have an optimized workflow when you are making your packs. You must make sure that everything is organized and your area where you make packs is free of clutter and any other distractions and just things that make it more difficult for, to find things. Just make sure that your area for making packs is very organized and make sure that you always back up everything you do because if you make one mistake and you accidentally save something, there's no way you're getting it back without a backup. Now I am going to go over the most common mistakes that people have when making texture packs that are mainly caused by porting them from Java to Bedrock. One of them is using an automatic pack porter. Now for the lazy people out there, an automatic pack porter can be perfectly fine for you. But a lot of the time, these pack porters are rarely updated and they just have very bad code and loads and are just filled with bugs that just end up ruining the pack. So while using an automatic pack porter is an easy process, it is not the ideal process if you want to make a perfect pack. The next thing I'll be discussing is the dreaded green dirt problem. This is a issue that I see in so many packs. It just gets annoying. Like, how do you not know how to fix it? This is caused by differences in how grass textures work between Java and Bedrock Edition. On Java Edition, they use a separate overlay texture to determine what part of a grass block will be colored by the color map texture. In Bedrock Edition, it uses a single texture and determines based on alpha channels. So we're going to go ahead into our image editor and we're going to fix this issue for ourselves. So as you can see here, we're inside of our pack in the blocks folder. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for your grass texture. My grass texture is over here and this is the problem. We're going to fix this together. So the first thing you need to do is open your texture in an image editing software like paint.net. I highly recommend paint.net as it is free and you can get loads of new plugins that will increase your ability to edit things. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we will select all of the dirt in this texture. Make sure that we aren't selecting the grass. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to use Bolt Bait's transparency plugin. This is for paint.net, but 
In other image editing softwares, there are other ways to do this, to change the transparency. We're going to select the dirt and we are going to make it 99% transparent. We are not going to do 100% as this will delete all of the data and it will just remove all of the pixels entirely. The next step you need to do is you're going to have to select the actual grass part of this texture and you are going to reduce its saturation entirely. The reason you're doing this is because it is supposed to be a grayscale texture that has its color applied to it by the color map. If you keep the green here, then it means that the color map is going to be added onto this green area and it's going to make it really dark and it's going to make it not match the top of the grass. So make sure to do this, make sure to reduce the saturation entirely. So now after you've done that, you are pretty much good to go. And now upon reloading your texture pack, you will see that the grass texture is now fixed. I actually broke this on purpose, so you will get better results than I do. The green dirt is now completely removed. The color map is only applied to the actual grass part of the texture and not the dirt. The next mistake we will go over is absolutely horrible cube maps. Ew, what is that? This is not by any fault of the original creator of the cube map texture. This is just another reason why you should switch to Java Edition. No, I'm just kidding. The reason why the cube maps look so bad on Bedrock Edition is because it is physically positioned differently to cube maps on Java Edition. I'm not going to go into the history as to why Mojang keeps it this way, but I do have a really useful fix for you guys, which involves dropping a single file into your game. In the link in the description, I have posted a GitHub link for a shader that I myself have made. All the code is open source. So to install the shader, you're going to go to the release section and you're going to download the one that is appropriate for your Minecraft version. The 1.0 version is for 1.16.200 all the way to 1.19.51. The new one is for 1.19.60 and above. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to choose a shader that suits your Minecraft version. If you're on Android, you will have to modify the APK file. If you're on Windows, you can either use Bedrock Launcher or IOBit Unlocker to put the correct file in the correct place. So what you need to do is navigate to the place where Render Dragon shaders are stored, which is generally in Data, Renderer, Materials, and all of your shaders will be here. If you're using Bedrock Launcher, it is just as easy as dragging the file in and replacing it. This will replace the default cube map shader with the one that I made, which corrects the position of it. Now, after you've done that, you can basically restart your game and look at the difference it makes towards the cube map. But as you can see, now when we load in game, you can see that the cube map has been entirely fixed. And if you want to have the best experience when using packs, you should use the shader. Another thing is improper naming. Improper naming happens when you use an automatic pack porter that fails to translate some of the names over. This is basically because on Java Edition, the folder and file structure and the naming schemes of the textures are just slightly different to Bedrock Edition. It can be different by like a single letter, but it is enough to basically stop it from working entirely. I suggest downloading the vanilla Java resource pack and the vanilla Bedrock resource pack and looking at the differences in naming of these different files and textures. Now, the last mistake I'm going to go over is the use of custom fonts. Custom fonts were okay to use in older Minecraft versions. However, in the recent updates, custom fonts have been basically completely broken. When you use a higher resolution font than normal, as you can see, the font is full of artifacts and it just is not scaled properly. And this is something that is unavoidable with these new Minecraft versions. And I don't think Mojang is ever going to fix it. We love Mojang. If you use a custom font, please make sure that it's the same resolution as the vanilla font. Now, as I was making this video, I actually noticed that I myself had made a mistake during this pack. This is just a reminder that nobody is perfect, but we are going to use this mistake I made here as an opportunity for learning. So the first thing we're going to do is navigate to the block that we want to fix. In my case, this is the copper ore. So once you've found your texture that, that you want to edit, you're going to open this in your image editing software. So now when you're making a texture, you need to plan ahead on what you actually want to do with it. You can't just jump in and just think of it on the fly. You can, but it's difficult and it's not advised. I want to keep the default copper ore texture, but I want to replace the stone. We can go ahead and deselect some parts manually. Now that we have a perfect selection of what we want to keep, we are going to remove this background. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a new background for our ore texture. For this, we are going to use the stone texture that comes with the pack and we're going to add it as a layer. And we're going to make sure to move it underneath 
the copper ore layer. Now, as you can see, this looks pretty good already, and I could I could just save this and leave this in the pack. But there are additional modifications that I want to use. I want to add a PVP outline. We instead are going to create ourselves an outline using the gradient tool, so we can actually smoothly transition between these two different colors. So for this, we are going to create a new layer, select this entire block. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to deselect the inside of the block so we have a one pixel wide outline of this entire block. We want to render a gradient. Now this is different in different image editing softwares, but most advanced ones do have a gradient tool. Open the gradient tool and as you can see, by default, it looks pretty bad because we haven't specified the colors we want. We are going to make it diagonal so that we have one color on one corner and on the opposite corner, we have a different color. So for this, I want it to be green. I'm going to try to match the color of the copper best as I can by adjusting the brightness and all the different values. As you can see, that matches pretty well. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the second color and we are going to make it orange. We are going to make sure that this color matches well, so we will go ahead and adjust the brightness and, and the saturation of it so it matches perfectly. I think that matches pretty well, and we are going to save this. So what you're gonna do is you're going to save as, you're going to save this as a PNG, and then click save, and it will say, do you want to replace it? Just click yes. So if we go in game and we reload our texture pack, as you can see, it is now completely fixed and I think I'm kind of proud of what I've done in the span of a few minutes. It is just something that this basically corresponds to the attention to detail part that I was mentioning earlier. Last thing I'm going to talk about is optional features that you can add to your pack to improve it even further. I have made a bottom chat and it's also transparent and I've also made the position transparent within the UI code. Now I've also done the same thing to the scoreboard by editing the UI code. I have removed the numbers and I've removed the background from it, which I think just makes it look insanely clean in my opinion. Now I'm going to end the video here and just keep in mind that all of these tips will help you creating packs no matter what platform you're on. But keep in mind that this tutorial is intended for Bedrock Edition, but a lot of the things will translate over to Java Edition pack making. And uh, without further ado, uh, bye.